So today we're gonna get diving into our series called Relationship Goals. Hashtag Relationship Goals. It's because there's more to marriage, there's more to relationships than is only what you see on social media. And so if you're here for the very first time, last week we showed some photos of, uh, of what it looks like. You know, when you go on social media and you find these, these pictures of couples and you see um, there's a hashtag in there called relationship goals or couple goals. And it's usually a couple that have somehow arranged a photographer to take a spontaneous moment that has been filtered many times. And that's what it is like to have a great relationship or marriage. And so here's just one or two photos that we're gonna see. I mean, trustful moment, you know? I love you so much, babe. Your, your life insurance is up to date, right? Okay, cool. Relationship. I've never had that goal for my relationship. Next one. I mean, it's beautiful, right? But have you ever thought of hanging your wife out of a moving train and giving her a kiss on the forehead and say, I love you, babe, while the photographer is sticking their camera out the window? Never gonna happen. And so when we look at it, they go, we want that. I want, I want the relationship that's all sunset and never winter. But that's not what real is. And we wanna set some real relationship goals in and through this series. And so what we talk about is we wanna be Christ-centered. So what, that's what we spoke about last week. If you weren't here last week, you can catch up on our YouTube channel or our podcast and listen to last week's message. It's all about being Christ-centered because something's at the center of our relationships. It's, but if it's not Jesus, it's not on a strong foundation. We wanna be mission-driven, that we are called to live in unity, live together for a single purpose. We wanna be devil kicking because the devil wants to get at your marriage, at your relationships. And we wanna make sure that we kick him out of that. And then we wanna be covenant keeping, that our marriages will last throughout our lifetime. That's the goal. Because when we get married, we don't sign a contract. We enter into a covenant with God and with our spouse. And so for the sake of this series and putting, talking about these relationship goals, Let's go through them again together. I'm gonna go through it once and then you're gonna follow with me, okay? Are we clear? Are we clear? Yeah. All righty, all righty, all righty. We wanna be Christ-centered, mission-driven, devil-kicking, and covenant-keeping. Now, everybody, we wanna be Christ-centered, mission-driven, devil-kicking, and covenant-keeping. One more time. We wanna be Christ-centered, mission-driven, Devil kicking and covenant keeping. Awesome, well done. You can give yourselves a great round of applause. That was brilliant. Between you and me, better than the first service. You know, but you find a lot of people talk about how after years in their marriage, they've just grown apart. They've, uh, they feel like the person that they got married to is no longer the person that they are married to that they've just been on a different journey and on a different way, that, that all of a sudden they don't even recognize one another anymore. And, and this is how we said, I'm, I'm just not happy. I, I just don't know if I love you like I used to love you. I don't know if I love you anymore. And the thing is, if, if we're not careful, we will live a degree apart, but over 10, 20, 30 years, we will be miles apart if we don't walk on the same journey, different People. Now, my wife and I, we're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but we've been, we have the blessed honor to be married for 15 years, and so hopefully some of this is gonna be helpful to you. And this is a series that we picked up from Life Church. Bless them for, for giving it away. But if you're saying that the goal of my marriage is to be happy or it's, it's to just be in love, that's, that's not what the, the, the foundation of a healthy marriage is. The foundation of a godly marriage isn't happiness, it's unity. So God doesn't care as much about our happiness as He does about are we unified around the same things. There is gr something greater than our happiness. Yes, He wants us to be happy. Yes, He wants us to be blessed. But there's something better and something greater than that, and it's called unity. Unity. So we're gonna read from Genesis 1, verse 27 and 28. But could I ask you to stand to your feet with me as we pray? 
If you're not a Christian, you don't have to worry. You can stick your hands in your pockets, no problem. But if you wanna pray with me, you can just turn your palms to heaven as we receive God's word and open up our hearts. Father, I thank you that we can gather together here in your name. Lord, we love you so much. And we ask you, Lord, that in the moments that we have left here, that you would speak to us, you would lead us, and you would guide us. And that our hearts would be open to receive from you, Lord, because we want blessed, healthy, and fruitful marriages. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Great stuff. Take your seats. Genesis chapter one, verse 27 to 28. So God created human beings in His own image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. You see, before God uh, gave them any sort of idea of happiness, God, God gave Adam and Eve, the very first married couple, a mission. They had a purpose in their, in their relationship. They had a purpose that was much bigger than them. They actually had a mission. And you and I also have a mission should you choose to accept it. Okay, this message will self-destruct in five seconds and church is finished. They had a mission to multiply, to expand, to conquer the earth and to create and recreate. You and I also have this mission in our relationship with God and our relationship with one another, a relationship to multiply, to grow, to expand, not just the waistline, but our influence, amen? to to expand our family, to expand our reach, our generosity, to create with God the kind of world that God wants to have. And the foundation of every nation is healthy families. The foundation of every church is healthy families. Now it's okay if family has been broken and, and there's no criticism or condemnation on that, but the reality is the devil is at work in relationships and in marriages, and we wanna kick him out so that we can build healthy, strong marriages that are on a single focus and a single purpose, to be on mission. And you need each other to do it. You can't do this thing alone, you can't. If you're single, go at it. But if you're married, you can't do it on your own. You need one another to fulfill all that God wants for you to fulfill. That's how it's done. So you're a team, you're a couple, you're a squad, you're an alpha team, you are a seal, whatever it takes, you are that team. Now, I know this is gonna be really corny, but when Lara and I were traveling and backpacking through Europe, we actually came up with our very own theme song. Yeah, we have a theme song for our marriage. And yes, I'm going to sing it because I have a microphone, okay? But it's short. It's simple, but it's deeply powerful. Every time we felt adversity, you know where you, where you, you catch the wrong bus and now you have to hike back to the other place and this is, this is chaos. We, we came up with this theme song and uh, because we're a team, you see. So it's gonna go like this. So just forgive me. This is a very vulnerable moment. <laughs> I'm giving you an insight. It goes like this. La la, because I call my wife Lala sometimes. Okay. La la, the adventurer. Swan the adventurer, la la and Swan the adventurers. Thank you. And since then, we've added Samuel into that song because we're a team, a squad. We're doing this together. We've got each other's back. We're, we're, we're together in the adventure that God has got for us. That song is way more powerful in stereo when Lara and I both sing it. So, <laughs> But we have that... Theme song, because we are a team. Genesis 2, verse 24, the Bible says, this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Two become one in marriage. Two personalities, two interests, two different passions, but united into one common purpose. No longer two, but one. And what God seeks to unite the devil schemes to divide. See, God brought man and woman together and united them together. And ever since then, the devil is so focused on dividing the very thing that God has been uniting. Because in unity, the Bible teaches, God commands a blessing. So when we are going together, 
God's blessing and favor is upon that. But when we're apart, all sorts of chaos and sin and trouble enters into relationships. So what God seeks to unite the devil schemes to divide, and he did it in the garden, he did it with Adam and Eve. They were blessed, they were happy, they were fulfilled, they were content in the garden, they had good and meaningful work, they had a mission. But the enemy came to divide and disrupt that. He came to disrupt relationship with God, distract them from their mission, and destroy unity. Because if you're fighting one another, you're no longer fighting your common enemy. You're no longer fighting for something, you're fighting each other. Keeps you distracted. And so the enemy takes Eve aside. Yes, Adam was with Eve, okay? But, but he takes her aside and says, did God really say that you couldn't do that? You see, whenever we're alone, the enemy's voice in our life is really loud. And we can easily lose perspective. But when we're united around the mission of God and we're together and we talk with one another, we believe for the same things, it's very hard for the enemy to come in between couples. That's also why life group is so important because you've got to do life with other people so that whenever you hear the voice of the devil, your life group comes around you and says, that's not from God, that's from the devil. This is how we ought to live and grow and do what God has called us to do. And they can speak into your marriage and you can speak into other people's marriage. We have each other's backs, we're a team, amen? What God united, the devil is dividing. Amos chapter three, verse three says, can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? A good question for us is how many of you have a direction for your marriage? How many of us, when we got married, we said, this is the direction we wanna take for our marriage? Most of us are probably, we got married because we were in love with one another. We saw each other's unborn children in each other's eyes. You scrapbooked what your kids might look like. They were ugly, but they were yours, you know? We never think about what's the direction we wanna walk in. And if you walk one degree apart, it doesn't seem like a big deal after four years. But if you keep walking one degree apart every day for the next 10, 14, 20 years, then you go, I don't even know you. And so what we wanna do is we wanna walk in the same direction so that after 50 years, we're still celebrating each other, amen? The enemy wants to bring division. What is division? Division is simply this, two different visions. I wanna go this way and I wanna go that way and we'll see wherever we meet up. That's what division is. What Proverbs 29 verse 18 in the King James Version says, that where there is no vision, the people perish. And so when we find marriage with either two competing visions or no vision, no direction for where this marriage is gonna go, we find our marriages in a state of perishing because then anything seems good to you. Work as long as you want, as much as you want. Travel as much as you want. If there's no vision, we enter into a state of perishing in our relationship. And so the question I wanna give to you today is what is your marriage about? Uh, <laughs> what is your marriage about? Uh, love, happiness, raising kids? Uh, how many of us could really answer that question? Craig Rochelle says this, that one of the greatest tragedies in marriage is when two people are together but not united, which means we share the same house. We're the best roommates, but we're not united. There's a couple in scripture that we wanna talk about just briefly. And there's lots of great couples. You know, you've got Ruth, Boaz, you know, um, Mary and Joseph and a few others. But there are a couple in the New Testament that whenever they are mentioned in scripture, they are always mentioned together. It's never one without the other. And they're mentioned six times in the Bible. And that is Priscilla and Aquila, friends of Paul, leaders in the church of Rome and in Ephesus. Romans 16, verse three to five says, Paul's writing to the church. He says, give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in the ministry of Christ Jesus. In fact, they once risked their lives for me. 
I am thankful to them, and so are all the Gentile churches. Also, give my greetings to the church that meets in their home. Powerful, this couple supported Paul's ministry. They were, in fact, tent makers like Paul was, and they were co-laborers. They were bringing the gospel with Paul into these, into these cities. And they supported him. They were with him. Um, they, were, they, were, they risked their very lives for Paul and for the preaching of the gospel. Now, why would you do that? You only risk your life for something you deeply believe in. Their lives were radically changed that much. And they had the same vision. They were unified around that vision. They even had a life group in their home. They were Christ-centered and they were mission-driven. I see couples in this house today. You're gonna be starting life groups in their homes pretty soon because they wanna be mission-driven. But just briefly for a moment, I wanna talk to those of you who aren't married. If you want a God-glorifying and mission-driven marriage in the future, you need to live a God-glorifying, mission-driven life today. You can't want something then if you're not willing to live it now. Because you're gonna catch up, you're gonna see, oh man, this guy loves Jesus so much, he builds the church, he even loves animals, and he serves in the local soup kitchen. Yeah, but he's not looking for you. Because when you're serving Jesus and following Jesus, like I said last week, you wanna keep going and then look around and see who's there. But if you're not on that journey, you're not gonna see those guys. You're not gonna see those girls. Live a God-glorifying, mission-driven life today. There's a story about this one girl in the US who grew up in a Christian home and uh, went to church with her family and then um, went off to university because there, I mean, they travel all over the world the, the country to go to a, a university. And she stayed in a res there, got into one of those um, sororities. Yeah, sororities. <laughs> we'll just, uh, we'll just came back from the States, sororities. And, um, and, and she got involved there and she got invited to some of the parties. And you know, she's a good Christian girl, so she, she held out, but she began to compromise on her beliefs and on her, on her morals. And she started drinking and then one thing led to another. She got drunk a few times. She even started sleeping around with some guys that she thought were, that would be work out in a relationship. Um, and that just kind of led to the next thing, which was she started taking some drugs recreationally. Um, but then in university, she meets this amazing Christian guy who loves God, serves in his church, um, serves people. And she, she went home for one of the breaks and she spoke to her mom and told her mom all about this amazing Christian guy and all he does. And, and when she gets back, back to class, back to university, she's gonna try, get with him, maybe even into a Bible study. You know what I'm talking about? Evangie dating somebody. And, uh, she, but, but then her mom listened to her and, and said to her, oh baby, a guy like that's not looking for a girl like you. So what Andy Stanley says is that we should become the people that the people we're looking for are looking for. So if you want a God-glorifying, mission-driven spouse, live that way today in your singleness. Singleness is not a disease. It's a whole number. You can like serve Jesus and not even die being single. <laughs> you don't build a life of righteousness in the future on a foundation of sin today. So serve Jesus and follow him passionately. And then when you've been doing it a while and you start looking around and you're seeing other people, nice, then you, then you start coming up with good Christian like, like um, dating lines, you know, like, did it hurt? Did what hurt? When you fell from heaven, you know? You, oh, no, oh, it's so, I know, it's, it's terrible, I, I'm old. I don't use lines anymore, but as you can tell, I never used lines, but, but you know what, I serve Jesus so passionately now, but I believe that we can serve him even better when we're together. That's when we ought to be getting married. That's when we ought to be linking up with our spouse, better together. So what is your mission? Maybe it's raising godly kids. You know, that's a really God-honoring mission, raising children that love Jesus. But maybe there's other people, that, maybe your mission is actually just about sports or it's about activity, or maybe it's about popularity and image. 
maybe the vision for your life and the mission for your marriage and your relationship is that you just wanna, you're the couple that hikes together, that goes camping together, that does everything together. And Monday, Tuesday through to Saturday and Sunday, you're on a hiking trail, you're on a bike ride, wherever. That's fantastic. Maybe you're the, the couple that's popular, that wants to be popular. You, you wanna drive the certain car, live in the certain community, have the certain house, invite people that they can see how amazing everything is. And you've got this amazing image on the outside of you. You wear all the latest things. Maybe that's your mission in life. But the problem with that is those missions take you off on very different tangents. Because you can be passionate about cycling and one can be passionate about knitting. You guys are going in different directions. If that's all your marriage is about. You don't serve together. In fact, maybe you barely go to church twice a month. You never skip an activity for something God related. In fact, you often skip God-related things for other activities. Like maybe you enjoy mountain biking and you know, the, <laughs> just don't go to church because the, the weather is good and the, the trail is nice. Or, or maybe the Revive Night, you've, you're watching Survivor and uh, don't wanna be in worship. Or maybe there's prayer meeting happening and you're like, yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather wash my hair or go to a movie or go on a date or always looking at other opportunities, other activities to replace a God activity. And that's the thing that you do that, you're, you're actually just giving the devil more space in your life. Because what we're doing is we're pushing God out this way and that way and saying, we've got a different mission. We've got our mission on our mind, not God's mission on our mind. Where are you serving together? What is your mission? Do you serve in church together? Do you serve on the front line, maybe worship or kids' church? Do, would you serve together on a dream team? Like dream team, yeah, that's great. But those oaks work hard. They do work hard. But sacrifice is the only way the kingdom of God has ever been built. Sacrifice is how you change the world. And the dream team changes the world one person at a time. But it looks like work. Yeah, but they're on a mission together. They're going somewhere. But maybe even God's plan for your life is bigger than Sunday serving in church and the dream team. Maybe it looks like you're the couple that is really passionate about opening your home to teenagers in your community. Maybe you wanna open your home to exchange students from overseas. Maybe you serve together in a soup kitchen. I don't know what it is, but you need to have a mission bigger than you that glorifies God. Amen? Good. There's two things that unite us. It's either a common enemy or it's a common mission. Remember the, the 2010 World Cup? Wasn't that amazing? It was so good, it was so much fun and our nation was like alive. Like you were hugging people, high-fiving people that you didn't even know. After that, we become so divided. Why? We had a common mission to put on a great tournament. But maybe you've got a common enemy. You know, there's that person at work that you don't like, but all of a sudden, both of you don't like the same person. Now you're best buds, <laughs> right? There's, there's a common enemy. So I've got two questions that I'm gonna give to you that'll help you to discover what your mission is together. What do you both love? Like, what do you both love? What makes you so passionate? What, when you do it, makes you come alive? And what do you both hate? What can't you stand? What, what drives you to the point of somebody's gotta do something about this? What are those answers to those two questions? And in that, you will find your common mission. Like maybe it's you love kids, but you hate the fact that many kids don't have families. And then you decide you're gonna foster children. There are so many families in our church that are fostering kids adopting kids, and they are my personal heroes. I can't, I'm so amazed at them. And there's another couple right now that are, that are going through that process. I'm cheering them on, it's amazing. Maybe you love community, love friends, but you hate seeing other people be lonely. Well, why don't you host or lead a life group? Why don't you invite someone out for lunch after church? Maybe you're good at making money and you live beneath your means so that you can be generous and give into legacy. Maybe you love people and you hate injustice. 
Why don't you get involved in SALT and feeding kids in our schools, lifting up the vulnerable and the hurting women and children in our community? Those are great things that you can do together that gives you common vision. But unity is not, doesn't mean that you're the same. Imagine being married to the exact same person as you. If Lara was like me, it just wouldn't work. Nothing would get done. <laughs> unity means that you're together. Yes, you can have different passions. Yes, different interests. But a common vision, a common thing driving your life. You know, Lara and I are so, so different. We're so different. She's structured, I'm completely unstructured. She's got it together, I am a mess, right? She, she is introverted, I'm extroverted. Isn't it amazing when you get married, the very things that brought you together is the same things that begin to drive you apart? I love it how spontaneous he is. Come on, can we just plan the trip for once? Can we actually just, like, why are you last minute? You know, I love the fact that you're such a free spirit. Why do you keep leaving your socks everywhere? Why did you cook like your mother? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I have never said that. Lara cooks amazing. <laughs> the very things that draw us together are the things that begin to pull us apart sometimes. But it's okay to be different. Lara and I are completely different. And we serve in different ministries. I actually tried to serve at Kids Church with her once. Once. Kids Church is an amazing ministry. I encourage everyone to go there. But when I went there, I stepped into a room full of little children. They started to cry. I started to cry. I never went back. I'm like, they are pack animals. They sense fear. But you know what? Lara's got a gift and a grace of God on her life for children, for children's ministry. She loves it. She comes alive with it. She loves other people experiencing the same. But that doesn't mean we do life separately. I cheer on her ministry. Every meeting and we pray, I pray into that. I celebrate her gifting. I celebrate her ministry. She celebrates what we do, what I do. She prays for me. She prays for the church. She keeps putting input in. We talk about it all the time. Different ministry, but a singular mission to build the church and serve people. That is our mission. And that what keeps us going in the same direction. Yes, different, but united. Don't just share an address. Don't be great roommates. There's more for your marriage than being a good roommate, than having the same postal address. Don't just have a sex life together. Whoa, <laughs> sex in church, yes, I'm talking about that. Don't just have a sex life together. Yes, have a sex life. But your marriage shouldn't only be about that. And I wanna speak just, I'm sorry, just briefly to couples here today. If you're single, sex is amazing, wait till you're married. <laughs> Done. <laughs> but if you're married here today and you haven't, you haven't had sex in a while, I'm not talking about the last three days, Men, if you haven't had sex in a while and you haven't been intimate, that is your next first priority. Because when couples don't get intimate through that, it gives the devil a foothold into the relationship and all of a sudden, the lady at work or the man at the grocery all of a sudden starts paying attention to you and now you are connected to them. If that's where you are at today, break away from that. Break that relationship, break those friendships off. Resign from work if you have to. Your marriage is more important than that. If you haven't had sex in a while, start praying. Take your wife on a date, take him on a date. Even if you're still mad about something, it's okay. But let God bring you together, be reconciled, unified, intimate together, because in that is where God provides trust and protection for your marriage. Kick the devil out of your relationship. Amen? Okay. You gotta love a church that tells, like, promotes that, right? Okay. Everyone's like awkwardly like. <laughs> 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 
Don't just love the same sports team. Don't just support the box together. Don't just be people that go on holiday together. Don't just be people that are all about your children. Have a mission to be Christ-centered. You know it, mission-driven, devil-kicking, and covenant-keeping. Because when you are Christ-centered, you are more likely to have a common mission for your life. You are more likely to kick the devil out of your marriage, and you're more likely to be covenant-keeping. Talk about a way to bulletproof your marriage. Swain, it sounds too simple. Well, maybe that's what we need, is to be simple. You can either be driven by problems or driven by God's purpose. Thanks, Ray, you can come up. You can either be focused on what we want or focused on what God wants. You can be about pursuing your own desires or we can be about pursuing destiny, God's plan for our life, which is better when we're together, united around a common mission too busy fighting with God for the purposes of God, for the salvation of humanity, for revival in our city, loving people, too busy fighting that than to fight one another. Because when you're fighting one another, we're too distracted. I can't pray when I fought with Lara. I can't, I can't. I have to first reconcile, ask for forgiveness, all of that to come together where now it's two people running hard for God in one relationship that would begin to magnify your influence and magnify your impact in serving Jesus. So why are you married? It's a good question to ask yourself today. And this is the answer, to glorify God. That's it. You and I, or in a relationship to glorify God. And I found that when we pursue God's dream, He starts to fulfill our dreams. But when we start pursuing our dream, we abandon God's dream sometimes. So I wanna encourage us together today that our marriages would glorify God. You don't have to be in the same ministry, you just have to be pursuing the same kind of Jesus, doing what Jesus wants us to do serving in some capacity to advance His kingdom. Christ-centered, mission-driven, devil-kicking, and covenant-keeping. I'm gonna pray as we close today's service. Just close your eyes and... Dear God, I just wanna thank You for Your grace. Father, I thank You that You are good and You're merciful, God. Lord, you are so good. Thank you for bringing us together. Even if the person we're married to drives us mad, praise you for them. I just pray today though, Lord, that that we would begin to be unified around what you want, unified around a common mission to extend your kingdom. Because Father, there is blessing in unity. And so we ask you, Lord, to unify us. Bring us together, Lord. Where there is reconciliation and forgiveness needed, I pray that that would enter in. Where there is healing needed and restoration needed, bring that in, Lord. By your Holy Spirit, I pray that the sun won't go down today on anyone's anger, but that we'd be reconciled to one another and decide to pursue you together. In Jesus' name. To close out the service, there is something that you ought to do and there's homework for you. If you're married, your homework is this. Go home and pray and ask God what you should do together. And then discover a ministry that you can start together or or be involved in with one another. Something to do together. Where where you discover, you talk about it, you, you pray and you talk about it over dinner tonight What do you love and what do you hate? And let's do it together. Maybe you need a next step and to join the dream team. You don't know what ministries are available. Well, if you join Growth Track today at quarter past 12, we'll explain all of that. You'll see what she's good at. 
You will see what He's good at. And then somewhere but in the middle of that, you're gonna find a great place to work together on the mission that God has for you. But please don't go home and talk about everything else other than what God's plan for your life is and what that mission is. Hi there, we wanna thank you so much for joining us on the View Church Sunday YouTube channel today. We hope this message has inspired you, it's lifted your faith and helped you to take your next step in God. And we wanna encourage you, why don't you use this message as a tool, as an invitation weapon that you can use to send to people so they too can be inspired and have their faith lifted. We hope that you have an amazing week and we'll see you next time.